start. As always, we need the instruction set, which I should have printed out beforehand. I'll just open it up over here, and then I need the file, so I'm enable editing. Open this file. As always, it gives you two screens, so you know this is just documentation name. This is always where you're working at. You need to go enable editing, and then we need to change the name up here, so I go file save as. Then go to browse, put this in my fall CS110, take one off, and put a two on there. Oh, and then this puts copy of. This lab wants to you know, make copy, and we got to take that off. So we get all done. We want to make sure that's the name of it. We'll save that. Um, I'm going to take the instructions and move them over to the next screen over here. So I've got them on another screen. So anyway, it tells you to make sure you open this. So it tells you that Rebecca Fox, the budget director, blah, 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 and she has to update. So I'm going to go to the annual budget report. So this is the annual budget down here. So I got the right sheet. Um, and so one to in the range C5 through C17 use conditional formatting highlight cell rules to format duplicate values in light red fill dark red text. So I got to select those cells C5 through C17 make sure you C5 through C17 and what we're looking for is duplicate values here so Go to the annual budget worksheet in the range C5 through C17. Use conditional programming to highlight cell rules to format duplicate values in light red fill with dark red text. Delete the row containing the first duplicate value. So there is duplicate values over here. Advertising office, server cost, computer device, professional devices, computer devices. So what we're going to do is go up here to conditional formatting. Um, I can't remember where that is. It's under data... Data. I don't want what if. It's not under what. You know, I'm sorry about that. It's, it's under home conditional formatting. Where am I? Here. I have conditional formatting. Okay. So we want to highlight cells that have duplicate values. So I'm going to go highlight cells, come down duplicate values. Now, light red fill with dark red text is what they wanted. So this is fine. Say OK. So I did that. Now the first row so they want me to go delete the row containing the first duplicate value. So the first duplicate value is this one here. So I'm trying to figure out if they want me to delete that row or this row. So that's the nice thing about having the instructions when I open this up here I can always go to the bottom of this and look to make sure which one I have here. So when I look here duplicate value so I'm looking at that computing devices and I want to keep the one that's 7,000 so when I come in here, I want to keep that one. I want to delete this one. So I just highlighted eight, and I'm going to delete that row. Okay. Now you'll get railroad tracks like this right here, and that just means your column's not wide enough. So if you double click the width, you see that it's wide enough there. And that's just from your screen being a little bit smaller than the other one. Okay. So I'm going to put the sheet back over here. So now in cell F5, insert a formula without using a function that subtracts the actual advertising amount. Cell B5 from the budget advertising. So in F5, put a formula, so I'm going to hit equals, and that formula is going to subtract the actual amount D5 from E5. So I need to type E5 minus D5. And for the test in that, if you get the wrong answer here, when I put this value in, once again, I'm going to go look, and I'm not going to bring it over your screen, but if I go look at the, the instructions, I can go see that in F5, that 54,250, same answer I have here. So that's the nice thing about having the key, and especially when you take the test too. So, um, so the formula without using subtracted, da da da. Now fill the range. So it's going to ask you to fill this. So I select this cell and use the fill handle. Bring this down to here, and fill that range. Okay. So this is range with the formula in the cells F5. Clear the conditional formatting from the range E5 to E16. So I need to come in here, E5 to E16. And I need to clear conditional formatting. So I need to clear rules from selected cells. Okay, that was step three. Step four, apply the percent style number format to the range G5 through G17. G5 through G17. So that means clear down to the total. And they just want me to apply the percent style. So that would be this one. 
Let me make sure how many decimal places. And they want to display one decimal place after the decimal point. So if I go over here, I can subtract and add. So I'm going to increase the decimal by one. I could do that. I could also went in here to number to open this up and said I just wanted one on the percentage. So either way, I would have worked on that. Now, so that was step. And the way I like printing these out because then I can scratch them off as I do it. So that was step four. Now in step five, in the range F5 through F16, F5 through F16, we'll stop there. Okay, so in the range F5 through, create a conditional for my rule that uses gradient fill blue data bars to compare values. So a gradient fill data bars. So I go to data bar, I want gradient fill, now I just got to figure out what color. So I want in, in, in the range, I've created conditional formatting rules that use gradient fill blue, and that is blue data bars. So hopefully I have the right ones there. Once again, I look at the key to make sure that they're the same. Oops, I rolled the wrong one. I was going over my instructions. Yeah, they're the same as my. So I always keep checking my key at the end of this. Okay, so that was step five. Now, step six, unmerge cell B17. So B... 17. So this cell down here, and they want me to unmerge that. So if I just click on that, that unmerges that. Then check the spelling in the worksheet and correct any spelling error. So I go up to A1. When I go to check spelling, I go to review, check spelling. And it says to fix a ledger, I need to change. Services, I need to change. So there's two spelling errors. Okay, so... Unmerge B17, spelling, correcting spelling, so that's step six. Step seven, go to the charitable worksheet, charitable. So I go over here. On this, I want to fill and merge the ranges B2 to G2. So I want to fill the merged range B2 to G2. So B2 to G2 is already there. So that's the merged range. Fill the merge range with blue accent to lighter 80%. So when I go up here to home, I gotta go to my little fill. And they want blue color. What color do I want that? I want the blue accent two. So I go across till I find blue accent two. This light blue. Blue accent one. Blue accent two. Now I need to go down to lighter 80%. It should be this first one. So blue accent to lighter 80%. After I use the fill for that, then fill the merge with blue accent lighter, hide column G. So I click column G and then I just go up to hide. Um, I can right click and hide it. So I can go here to hide. Okay, so I hide column G. That was the end of step seven. Step eight, apply the currency number format to range C5 through C13. C5 through C13. And they want me to apply the currency. Probably the easiest way you can pull this down and go to currency format. Um, using dollar sign and zero decimal places. So they want, so when I go to currency, they want dollar sign and zero decimal places. And a dollar sign, okay? One thing I will say, currency format follows along with the numbers. Accounting format puts the dollars over here on the edge of this. So that's the difference between accounting and currency. They both have dollar signs. Just accounting always late, keeps the dollars in a straight line. Okay, so step nine, in cell C15. So C15. Enter a formula using the sum function. So it would be equal sum, and then shift nine. Now I just have to figure out what the range, and that range is C5 through C13, so I'm just going to select C5 through C13, and then Shift-0 to put that range in. Once again, I go look at the, the answer key over here to make sure it's 41,000 on that sheet, and it is. So that was the step of step 9. Over to the second page, and cell C16, enter formula. And it's to use count. So equals count shift nine. So whenever you put a formula, you have to put shift nine to close that formula.